Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Siddharth Zarabi and you're watching our live coverage from the ongoing G20 summit here in New Delhi. What a day it's been. The Delhi Declaration, 100% consensus and unanimity on what was expected to be a contentious statement. That's been done. Uh, it's been done with complete unanimity of the participating uh, G20 member bloc. And it's happened a day earlier than it was expected to. Other developments during the day, the inclusion of the African Union taking the G20 effectively to becoming the G21. Two very important uh, new initiatives announced, including a biofuels alliance and a connectivity corridor, one of the most ambitious announcements that we have heard in a long time. Uh, after Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the connectivity corridor, which includes Saudi Arabia, the UAE, European Union, member nations, the United States, among others, US President Joe Biden called it the big deal. And with these many announcements and a massive 37-page Delhi Declaration, I am privileged to announce to you viewers that we are being joined by a very special guest, Krishnamurti Subramanyam, uh, one of the foremost economists in India, former chief economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance and currently the executive director at the International Monetary Fund. Welcome uh, to the show. Uh, uh, thank you for taking out the time. I want to begin by asking you to uh, tell our viewers about what you found to be the most significant uh, developments today. Thank you very much, Siddharth, uh, for inviting me and a very good evening to viewers. Um, I think each one of the three that you uh, mentioned were, uh, you know, very, very important. And uh, the impact of these will be seminal going forward, um, especially if I look at the, um, the, the, you know, the initiative for infrastructure creation, something that has been quite close to, you know, um, our hearts in India. Uh, you know, as part of the post-COVID economic recovery, India focused on infrastructure. Um, and now, you know, for that initiative to actually assume the kind of scale that it is assuming, uh, possibly rivaling the silk route that, uh, you know, once made India the favored trade partner across the entire world. Um, and I think that is why I'm not surprised at all when uh, President Biden called it uh, the big deal. Um, so that is a very, very significant uh, initiative. I also am you know, very pleasantly surprised by the Delhi Declaration. I think uh, it, it brings back focus um, you know, of the G20 to economic matters. If you would recall, Siddharth, the G20 as a platform was created after the global financial crisis to tide over economic matters. And uh, by uh, coming up with a declaration that focuses on the economic aspects um, of the uh, current war um, uh, and, and, and thereby emphasizing that at the same time also uh, mentioning the geopolitical aspect of um, not using threats for uh, you know, territorial gains. I think, uh, you know, both aspects, the political and the economic aspects have been covered very beautifully. I think that's very nice balancing act that's been done by the, uh, you know, team members. So the fact that it has come as a unanimous declaration is, of course, the icing on the cake. Uh, the third one, even the biofuel, uh, you know, alliance, I think is a very important uh, move given the, uh, you know, the, the, the climate and the sustainability aspects that, uh, you know, India had focused on. If you would recall, Siddharth, uh, the, the life, uh, you know, I initiative, the, the uh, lifestyle for environment that India had pushed at the start of the presidency, uh, this is a nice culmination of that particular idea and an exemplification of the same as well. So overall, I think already um, three sixes uh, hit in the, you know, in, in, in the first few overs of this particular, uh, you know, uh, T20 or G20 um, match, if you will. Uh, uh, you, and, and you used uh, a term that uh, I'm sure is going to be picked up uh, and made into a headline, the new Silk Route. Uh, fascinating description and uh, I don't know if you uh, if you had at the back of your mind the BRI 
uh, and the sorry state that it seems to be uh, in. But uh, we are not discussing that. How important can this new Silk Route, this Connectivity uh, Alliance Pact be in enhancing trade as well as exports out of India? What could the future look like here, Dr. Subramanian? Um, I think uh, full of promise um, and, and enormous promise, especially at a time when, uh, you know, forces against um, globalization um, and some of the, you know, uh, um, sort of uh, dampening uh, factors that have come on the trade front globally uh, at, at such a time, uh, you know, for this new silk route to, you know, if you will, uh, to be conceptualized and, um, you know, also to be implemented consistent with something that India has already done, as I referred to earlier, the focus on infrastructure as, uh, you know, uh, uh, as an economics method for economic, for, re for recovery, economic recovery. I think using that for global uh, growth is, is very promising. It will help again, bring, you know, trade into the, for, you know, forefront. Uh, some of the difficulties that have come on the trade front, I think can now uh, be overcome using this particular initiative and as you rightly said we would rather focus on the positives and and not get into any negative parallels this is i think an unparalleled opportunity um as possibly uh the new silk road you know metaphor captures uh the other thing uh, and sometimes a lot of uh, the average viewer who follows such uh, events gets confused is a lot of the terminology uh, that is associated with such multilateral gatherings. The Biofuel Alliance, Dr. Subramanian, for the average viewer, would I be right in saying that this is part of the continuing efforts of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, including through the International Solar Alliance, to de-risk ourselves from, uh, you know, the the crude oil uh, 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 sourcing that sometimes causes difficulties for our economy. Crude now back about $90 uh, to the barrier and concerns around that. Explain how the Biofuel Alliance, in your view, could in the long term change India's energy security mix. I think that's a very good observation that you've made, Siddharth, which is that um, Crude oil and any upward movements in the price of crude oil has typically exposed uh, the Indian economy to uh, you know significant vulnerabilities. Um, earlier, when the uh, you know the price for petrol, diesel, etc. was administered, uh, it would lead to a huge burgeoning you know fiscal deficit. Of course, uh, it would create the current account deficit and and also lead to inflation. In other words. Crude would actually affect the three key macro, you know, variables that uh, anyone, you know, studying macroeconomics concerns about fiscal deficit, current account deficit and inflation. Now, with the administered price mechanism actually having been dismantled, uh, you know, it doesn't affect the fiscal deficit as much, but it can still affect the current account deficit and it could possibly have some effect on inflation, uh, though uh, there I think um, Overall, because of various developments in our economy, the the uh, emphasis on fuel or the you know uh, uh, impact of fuel on overall inflation, even taking into account second round effects, the fact that transportation costs go up and thereby you know other costs go up from transportation costs going up, it's less than 10 percent, but it still does mean that the current account deficit gets impacted significantly, which can also have an effect on the rupee dollar itself. So you know, given these vulnerabilities. The uh, focus on, you know, on, on renewable energy, um, you know, through the Solar Alliance and now the Biofuel Alliance will definitely reduce India's dependence and thereby the vulnerability from the crude oil factor. Um, and I think, uh, you know, all these macro phenomena eventually impact the common man because, you know, inflation has a significant impact on their balance sheets. Um, you know, uh, when you have high fiscal deficit or when you have current account deficit, that also means then tough you know, decisions have to be taken, which uh, impact the uh, you know, life of the common man. So in, in, you know, in many ways, by 
really bringing down some of these external vulnerabilities for India through these three, you know, uh, variables, the current account deficit, you know, the fiscal deficit and the, uh, you know, and inflation, I think this will make a big impact. Um, it is consistent, as you rightly pointed out, with uh, India, you know, uh, uh, pushing for the solar alliance and then following now, uh, now up with the biofuel alliance. Uh, uh, let's turn our attention to some aspects of the Delhi Declaration. 37 pages, 83 uh, uh, paragraphs, 100% unanimity. But I want to focus, Dr. Subhanam, on the grain, food and energy security uh, points. And, uh, you know, these are uh, some of the highlights. Just to quickly recap, uh, the declaration says that potential for high levels of volatility in food and energy markets remains. It has therefore emphasized uh, the importance of sustaining food and energy security. It's also called for cessation of military destruction, uh, which, as we know, Russia and Ukraine have led to this. And it has called on Russia and Ukraine to ensure immediate and unimpeded deliveries of grain, foodstuffs and fertilizers inputs from Russia and Ukraine. I just want to add that India in the past has also faced some criticism for taking certain uh, trade measures with regard to food grains to ensure adequate supplies and prevent any price volatility in, in India. Explain this to the average viewer. How significant are these statements, sir? Uh, again, uh, quite important because um, what the, you know, the Russia-Ukraine war did was to really bring the focus on the supply side of the economy. Um, you know, uh, before the, the war, um, most people didn't even realize that across the world, you know, when it comes to uh, a lot of cereals, for instance, wheat, Ukraine, you know, was a big, uh, you know, exporter of wheat. Uh, Ukraine also was a big exporter of uh, you know, sunflower oil, for instance, um, and and Russia, of course, was a you know big exporter of of of, of crude oil. So the in this conflict has actually brought into attention the Im, the impact of supply side shocks on both food and on and, and energy. And I think uh, uh, you know the the one silver silver lining, if you would you know allow me to say it that way, uh, that the war has brought is to is this focus on ensuring that supply side volatility you know on food and energy is minimized. And I think uh, India has seized the opportunity through its G20 presidency to really work on both these supply side aspects. Again, consistent with something that India, you know, already had experience of doing, you know, uh, during the COVID, uh, COVID economic re recovery, where we were the first country to focus on the supply side factors. We've taken that now, you know, a further distance by, uh, uh, you know, focusing on both food and energy. I, again, is something that will really impact, you know, the uh, inflation, particularly globally, uh, and, and reduce supply side, you know, shocks uh, that come to inflation from these uh, two, two inputs. Uh, uh, Dr. Subramaniam, Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave uh, his first interview on India's G20 presidency uh, to Business Today uh, almost a month uh, uh, to the date today. And in that, he had spoken about India's role as a catalytic agent for uh, some uh, a new world order. Uh, we take that statement and connect it to uh, the, the letter and the spirit of the Delhi Declaration and it's very clear that this declaration and the unanimity that was folded also un, uh, points towards India's importance, minus China, of course, which has played the role of a spoiler throughout this year and previously as well, in terms of its standing in the global uh, order. How would you describe uh, India's standing uh, to those who perhaps do not follow this very closely? I'm glad you asked me this, Siddharth, because uh, from the vantage point that I've had the privilege to occupy, um, you know, I uh, get to see the kind of, uh, you know, status that India now commands in the Global Committee of Nations. Um, now, you know, I want to bring in the aspect of leadership because 
uh, you know our viewers would agree uh, that leadership whether it is you know in organizations or personal leadership or even at the you know global level leadership is not about crying about the problems but about coming up with solutions um, and i think the delhi declaration is a brilliant illustration of that aspect of leadership while everybody you know uh, uh, of course was worried about the problem from the you know from the war and and how it had actually led to uh, you know a difficulty in unanimity uh, in a very creative way by focusing going back to the to the to the basics of the G20 you know in in some sense first principles thinking you know recognizing what the G20 forum really was it is primarily an economic forum for you know uh, 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 for tiding over and coming up with solutions for economic problems because it was conceptualized after the global financial crisis which was an economic crisis uh, by going back to the basics thereby coming up with a very creative solution uh, focusing on the economics at the same time also you know not marginalizing the politics by saying that uh, you know this is something the uh, an illustration of you know not uh, uh, encouraging use of threats for territorial gains i think you know that's been a very 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 a uh, brilliantly conceptualized solution uh, and thereby uh, a, a nice demonstration of leadership that leadership is about coming up with solutions not crying about problems uh, one of the other interesting aspects uh, that we have observed uh, and i digress from the delhi declaration is the bilaterals that prime minister narendra modi has had viewers uh, a string of them but obviously the most important one being the one with the united states of america and uh, symbolic in the sense that it's happened before uh, the formal beginning of the summit and we will have uh, one of the bilaterals happening after the summit that is saudi arabia so two different countries again very very important for uh, india uh, overall uh, dr subramanian as far as the bilateral with the united states is concerned several uh, key Uh, points in terms of enhanced cooperation how does the relationship with the united states stand uh, for india especially uh, focused on the economic part of it once again so that you know uh, i'm glad you asked me this because well, you know i've had the uh, genuine privilege of having observed this carefully uh, and closely you know uh, before the honorable prime minister's visit to a uh, state visit uh you know uh, um a, a few weeks back uh to washington dc to the united states you know i was um privileged enough to witness the buzz there was you know in in washington dc we were taking walks around you know um i i stay very close to the white house and so you know can take walks around and i was seeing the kind of buzz and then you know i had the privilege of uh, being there when the inauguration happened um the kind of energy that was there uh, and the camaraderie you know i had the privilege of witnessing that first hand from a few feet uh, and i think uh, i can therefore uh, say with conviction that uh, there is tremendous warmth um, especially on the economic side uh, between the between india and the united states uh, if you uh, you know uh, take a look at the joint declaration that had come the statement you know after the prime minister's vi state visit there there were some very unique aspects that were covered in terms on defense on terrorism i think uh, unprecedented uh, you know territory being covered and this is an extension of the same uh, one got to see the kind of warmth between the honorable prime minister and president biden uh, so i think uh, the the clear uh, focus is on the fact that india in the next you know two decades presents an unprecedented opportunity and uh, you know uh, therefore the india us collaboration between the world's uh, largest democracy and the world's uh, youngest democracy is something that will be uh, you know a deep partnership for the future i'll add a couple of more points uh, you know uh, recently i had the opportunity to deliver a this a speech at the us india forum and there i talked about three factors with that are really coming together one which i already mentioned the largest democracy with the oldest democracy second you know an important change that has happened in india is the focus on wealth creation you know recognizing wealth creators as basically boons to society not you know thinking about sort of profit as a dirty word 
and that is something which is very much part of the the, the American dream. So there's synchronicity there as well. Um, and so I, I think the natural factors that were there, you know, earlier as well, are now coming together very well because of the uh, you know tremendous leadership that the honourable prime minister has been displaying. Uh, Dr. Subramaniam, uh, uh, even as we speak, uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, the formal dinner for all the visiting dignitaries uh, happening. But uh, as we as we continue this uh, conversation, I want you to also explain to our viewers about one more part of the Delhi Declaration. Our finance ministers, central bank governors will discuss taking forward the cryptocurrency roadmap at their meeting in October. How significant is this, Dr. Subramanian? I think, um, you know, the cryptocurrency is an area where there was a lot of work that was being done. Um, you know, um, from the uh, sidelines, I was able to see that because the, the fund was also involved significantly. The Clash Monetary Fund was also involved in these deliberations. And I think the coming together of India and the United States on cryptocurrency, on common regulation, you know, in this area is something that is a very important step. And of course, you know, the finance ministers and the central bank governors coming together, uh, you know, and, and sort of bringing their minds uh, um, in a combined manner to uh, come up with regulation in a very important but very fast evolving area is, I think, very uh, you know, heartening again. Uh, before we end this conversation, I want you to try and explain to our viewers uh, the announcement uh, as far as multilateral uh, development banks is concerned. Uh, uh, my colleagues have been telling me about the significance uh, of uh, the inclusion of that text in the Delhi Declaration. Uh, could you add to that uh, what does it really imply? So, you know, uh, um, in the reform of the multilateral institutions, uh, it, it, it sinks well with the uh, idea of life that uh, India introduced at the start of its presidency, uh, which was lifestyle for environment. And here, especially the focus on on climate change and on sustainability, uh, you know, of economic growth, I think is a very important uh, uh, aspect in terms of the goal setting. Uh, if you see, for instance, look at World Bank, you know, uh, the compatriot uh, institution, you know, to the uh, to the IMF, uh, which has had its goal traditionally as a world free of poverty, um, and now their their vision is going to be uh, a world without you know a world free of poverty, but on a uh, living on a sustainable planet. I think is a very important change in the vision. Uh, it brings in all the sustainability aspects, but climate change as well. Um, I think uh, these together uh, with, with some of the other granular aspects in terms of the uh, reforms in multilateral institutions will play an important role in uh, you know aiding the uh, global economic recovery uh, post the twin crisis of COVID and uh, you know and and the, and, and the war. All right, uh, Dr. Subramaniam, thank you uh, very much for your time with us on the show uh, today. Really appreciate you taking our time to discuss uh, the developments at the G20 viewers. Uh, we are going to wrap uh, uh, this here. We'll be back with more. Until then, goodbye.